James Ferguson, head of strategy at Arbuthnot Securities, joins us now. James, thank you so much for coming in. Well, I'm not that surprised, actually, because we don't have any of the details. So if you say don't look at the banks right now, it's because there's still so much uncertainty. And actually, the uncertainty is, is, you know, outweighing this will now to come up with a plan. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the terms of the plan are all important. I mean, if governments are bailing out banks, what they tend to be doing is injecting capital. And although they can decide whatever terms they want to impose, uh, that's generally dilutive for the existing holders of the capital. So it's not actually that usually that good for, uh, for shareholders. Um, but I think the markets are rising because the banks were already starting to factor in uh, something worse than that. So maybe this is some, some happy gr middle ground that they can... Uh, but James, uh, talk me through uh, the worst case scenario is, for example, that uh, because there's a three-way step to do this, right? The banks have to recapitalize themselves. If that doesn't work, it's up to the individual governments. And if that doesn't work, it's up to the EFSF. But let's say that France were to take too much burden because it needs to. It loses its crippling like, credit rating, and then the whole EFSF project unravels. Well, yes, but I mean, the first thing that the governments will try and do is try and uh, underwrite attempts for the private sector to, uh, to recapitalize the banks. Not necessarily terribly good for the existing bank shareholders, um, but uh, we raise new capital. That's diluted for the existing shareholders. If that fails to happen, then obviously that's rather um, bad news for the bank and its image. The government or taxpayer money has to step in, then they can set the terms. If you look at the terms that Belgium uh, is giving to the Belgian part of Dexia today, uh, they seem to be overpaying. Uh, as it were. So uh, that's quite good news um, uh, possibly for existing shareholders. But again, it depends on whether they're injecting it as new capital or whether they're buying out the existing shareholders. So the, the devil is in the detail very much in, in terms of these things. The message I would really put across, especially as far as Europe's concerned, is this really looks like just the beginning. Europe hasn't had a banking crisis like the UK and the US, Iceland and Ireland have. Europe is a, is a brand new uh, area. So. Uh, but, should be a red flag. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, very red flag. But in the UK, we have had a huge banking crisis, but we're not over the worst. We had that downgrade just last week of 12 lenders, and this is basically the rating companies saying, well, the government may not stand behind you. So that's also very scary for shareholders, well, is it? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a kind of really, for, for, for starters, it's not really scary for shareholders, um, because shareholders, it's really scary for bondholders. Shareholders tend to sort of get caught up in the damage, whatever. It's the bondholders who've got away with it so far. And what we're trying to devise in the UK is some sort of system that allows a bank to, to effectively go through administration. We can't have that uh, in the same way you can have for a non-bank because banks trade in credit. So whereas a normal company, say an oil company, makes oil or digs up oil and distributes it, um, we can stop them having any access to credit while they go through administration. But a bank trades in, in debt. So therefore, they're a, they're a sort of special beast. Um, and so what we're trying to do is find some way to allow that to happen. But going back to your earlier comment, I mean, yes, we've had a very huge banking crisis, but UK banks now don't all look the same. Some look good, some look nearly fixed, and some look like they won't be fixed for so, a long, long time. So some of them actually look much better than the European ones. Oh, absolutely. I mean, HSBC, for example, looks, um, looks like a paragon compared to any it's European bank you care to, to pick on. Uh, so yes, wouldn't. partly partly because it's, it had a strong enough capital base that it was able to deal with its problem areas, which are mainly, in its case, the U.S. Um, so it's, it's processed an awful lot of, uh, of, of loan losses and got an awful long way down the track. If you look at America, you'll see that those sort of activity happening a, a lot as well, and some American banks really are now look... You know, dare one say it, almost impossible to kill. Uh, Europe still completely at the end of that process. So James, would you actually stock pick or would you just advise your clients to stay away from banks altogether until we have more of a resolution? It's pretty much time to start stock picking. This is the first time I've said this in three years, but I think it is for, for the first uh, time it's the time banks, to start. Also in the banking sector, Within stock banks, pick. you can yeah. now start to stock pick. I mean, there are one or two banks now starting to pop up that and really And do you have favorite picks? I do have favorite picks. Um, in, the, in the U.S., um, against uh, all odds, Citigroup uh, looks like a, a very interesting case. Very far through the process in terms of loss realization. Very hard now to kill without some really extreme assumptions, which uh, even worse than Japan, for example. It would survive a Japan-type experience now, Citigroup, which is quite something. Um, but it did raise 100 billion of capital, so that explains it. Uh, and as I said, in the U.K., uh, or even in Europe-wide, you could do a lot worse than, than look at HSBC. Um, and this is not to... Uh, RBS? No, no. It's, it's just very, very uncertain at the moment. Our RBS, I think there's still uh, taxpayer work to be done there, I'm afraid, yeah. unless we're very lucky. So HSBC, anyone else in, in, in some of the peripheral countries? Or? Um, in the peripheral countries, or particularly if you look at sort of, uh, you know, the mainland Europe, the real problem is that at least initially today, before we've started the process of repairing balance sheets, before we started the process mm -hmm. of realizing losses, and they all have big wholesale funding gaps, and they all have hardly any capital, you look at the whole list and go, my God, 
Don't fancy the look of any of them at this stage. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, and James, thank you so much. Thanks again for joining us this morning. James Ferguson, Head of Strategy at Arbuthnot Securities.